Good evening. I'm very happy to be here. I apparently am winning the best dress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Melissa's father. Uh, she's quite a <laughs> I'm very proud of her, and she dragged me here. Uh, my story uh, is something I'd like to share with you. It, uh, it doesn't have much to do with puberty. It has to do with coming of age and a sex organ. But, uh, it's puberty in only the roughest sense. But it's a true story. Uh, I learned a very important life ex uh, lesson at a fairly young age. I was in my early 20s. And I learned it of all places at the uh, restroom of the Baltimore Memorial Stadium on 33rd Street. <laughs> now, you might remember that they're down at Camden Yards now, but back in uh, earlier, they were up in 33rd Street. You have to drive through downtown there and take the Baltimore Wa Washington Expressway up there and go up 33rd Street to uh, Memorial Stadium. It was an old place. It was very, very nice. Um, and uh, it was in the early 70s. I just moved down here from New York. And uh, I was in school. I was finished school. And so I took off to the ball game with some friends. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, it was nice, Baltimore versus New York, it was all exciting, everybody was happy, and everybody was drinking beer, it was a 50 cents a beer, national bohemian beer, and people <laughs> were drinking a lot of it, and I was drinking, drinking, so, any event, about the fourth or fifth, in fifth inning, I decided to go to the men's room, you know, so I walked over there, and uh, down the corridors, the bleachers there, and there was a men's room, I walked inside. And I, I saw it, I never saw it before, but there was a, a really quaint uh, tradition they had, the Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. I guess it was considered a southern town back then. Uh, and the, the, the tradition was they had a, an attendant who was dressed very formally in a Baltimore's hat and a tie and a very stately looking man. And his job, I gather, was to uh, hand out towel, uh, little paper towels to make sure the soap was on the think that there and to otherwise uh, you know provide decorum and civility to another you know, to, to the place and I thought it was great you know I never saw it before I thought it was great apparently they have any clubs or something but you know, this was the ball <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great so I went back to the seat drank more beer whatever and the ninth inning game over I don't know who won but <laughs> ninth inning you know everybody's leaving at the same time during the game everybody's sort of and saunters in and out of the bathroom you know at different times but here was the the full load was approaching the men's room at the end of the night thing. So I got up there. And you know, there was a certain, you know, you had to go to the bathroom. I got up there and there was a long line to get into the men's room. <clears throat> and you know, uh, nowadays I realize the line's always at the women's room, but they've never at the men's room, so I kind of got in line and I started. <clears throat> and the line was sort of moving, and the door was over there, so I wasn't even in the door yet. And it was kind of moving and moving and moving. And you know, you know, I didn't make much of it. But then there were more people coming, more people coming. You know, but kind of getting, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, I didn't, you know, unusual. In any event, people were moving up and got into the door and I kind of made the round the turn and the people were sort of, there were a couple of urinals, a couple of stalls, and, and people were sort of moving forward. But then the, the, the line started tightening up, you know, and people were kind of pushing against each other a little bit. and. You know, half a minute, a minute went by. <laughs> and, you know, there was a certain sense of urgency that started to take hold. And, and you know, men sort of start going like this a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. start. And women, I don't know exactly what you do, but, uh, <laughs> but there's pressure, there's pressure, and there's anxiety, and there's, you know, any event. That means one more. Two more, two more. Two more. Two more. Okay, so here it is. Uh, I, I'm moving forward. But then I sense something in the air. There's just too many people. There's not enough places. There's rumbling starting. <laughs> <laughs> hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> and there's sort of you know, anxiety in the air. You sort of start cutting it with a knife. And uh, I sense something's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, one guy sort of jumps over, and he's sharing a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> and there's growling and there's upsetness and, and one guy started talking about his prostate. Not even the prostate. I, I, I was 22 years old. I didn't know the prostate. But and I was like, I don't give a crap. Just go. And people are sort of, And then I looked and over there was the attendant. Fellow. And I could see on his face 
a great look of concern. <laughs> this was his fiefdom. This was his, his place. And he sensed something was going to happen. So all of a sudden, it was like the tension had risen. <laughs> it all just went berserk. It was literally Armageddon, the apocalypse, the burning of Rome. All hell broke loose. And everybody started jumping around. And there were three or four in a urine all the time. Three or four, any place they could go. All civility had broken. All the morals, all sense of propriety had, had vanished. And people, and in the sink, <laughs> all over the place. And of course, I, I don't know exactly where it was. I think I was at the, the sink. And then, yeah, and then there was chaos. It was the guy gets up, my friend, I see him standing. I'm not gonna stand. <laughs> he stands on his chair and he looks down in a Moses like, imperious voice and he says to the crowd, listening. If you're going to piss in the sink, don't hit the soap. 